Thank you, Willie. Thank you, John. Hello, everybody. And I'd like to welcome you all to the Story Train, right here on Continental Cablevision in Middleborough, Mass. This show is devoted to the fine art of story writing and storytelling. As a writer myself, I know how exciting the story process can be. From the first glimmer of an idea to the creation of a complete story, imagination is the key. My goal for each show will be to help turn the key of imagination and unlock the door to a world full of new ideas, characters, and places. I'll be sharing with you some of the stories that I've written, and we'll also make up some new ones. Each show will also feature an elementary class who will share with us some of their own stories that they've written themselves. At the end of each show, we'll have time to try new ideas and make up more stories. Everyone who hears the show is welcome to participate. The address for the show is right over here. The Story Train, Post Office Box 1372, Middleborough, Mass, 02346. This is for everyone to write in stories, ideas, and pictures. So please remember to, but please remember to put your name and phone number on everything you send in, in case I want to call you, in case it's something I might want to use on a, on a show in the future. So um, I love mail, and I'd love to hear from you. So please send in something. Now, for today's show, my guests today are Mrs. Carol Damon's fourth grade class from the H.B. Berkman School. But before I go any further, I would like to introduce Mr. Sawyer, who is the vice principal at the Berkman Elementary School. And he's going to talk a little bit about using your imagination and to make up stories and how important being creative really is. Mr. Sawyer, please. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Cacciatore. Hi, guys. Hi, Hi. all right. Well, I'm happy to be here today because I'm really excited to see what kind of stories you guys have written uh, for us today. And I want to talk a little bit about imagination. That's really important when we write stories. Can someone tell me what, what do you think of when you think about imagination and stories? What do you think about, Ryan? Uh, well, I'm just trying to imagine. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ryan. Imagine and create. Imagine and create. That's an excellent definition. Bobby? To think about some things to do. To think about something to do, that's good. Where do we get some of our ideas for imagination? Where do we get some of those I ideas from? David? From a place you've seen long ago, like a vacation. Okay, so sometimes when we travel and we go on trips, you might see something and you might start thinking about it. Sometimes riding in a car, you can always you can use your imagination, make up stories in your head. How many of you guys do that when you're riding along on a trip? Very good. What are some other ideas when we use our imagination? Crystal? Okay, some kids like to make stories about toys that come alive, like toys in your room, stories like the Velveteen Rabbit. Have you ever read the Velveteen Rabbit? That's a, a story that's like that. John, how about you? Like a dream that you had. Like, um, like, if, like if you had a good dream, then you would like write about it. Some of us have dreams, and that's, that's uh, something to, to write about. And our dream is our imagination working while we're sleeping, and that's a really neat thing. How about you, Laurie? Like when you see stuff, you really want to write a story about it? Okay, some things that we see, and it makes you, it triggers something in your mind and you want to write a story about it. And I'm really excited. I want to see some of these stories and hear some of the stories you've written. And I just want to tell you that writing and reading, because don't forget that when you read different kinds of books, those, those books are going to give you some different ideas about things you might like to write about. You might like to write about some of the characters you read about in books or some of the places that you read about in books, because you really it's hard to write. You think it's, can you write if you don't know how to read? They go together, right? And they're, they're really, you can't separate reading and writing. So what I'm going to encourage you guys is to keep reading and keep writing these great stories. And I'm really looking forward to hearing them and talking to you about them when we get back to school. And I want to thank Mrs. Cacciatore for inviting me. I think it's a great idea for a show. And I hope you guys really watch and uh, keep writing. OK? Great. Mrs. Cacciatore? Okay. That was great, Mr. Sawyer. Thank you. OK, now, kids, I guess I'd just like to talk to you for a couple of minutes. I've brought a couple of my stories that I've written that um, this class, Mrs. Damon's fourth grade class, has kind of given me ideas to do. And thank you, John. <laughs> but first, I'd like to, to point out our, sto our board here. The name of the show is The Story Train, all aboard The Story Train. There's the three I's in every story writing. And I would like to tell you, I've put them on the board here so that you can always remember what they are. Remember the three I's. Imagine an idea. That's using your imagination. To begin with, you have to use your imagination. Then you include some characters. 
anything, whether it's a dog, it could be a flower, could be a bird, could be a little girl, could be whatever you think it should be. And then you have to invent a plot. And that's, you have to decide where your characters are going to go. And that's the, that's the idea for the story train, because your imagination is, con is conducting you on your journey. You can go anywhere as long as you have, use your imagination. It can take you to Tibet, it can take you to China, it could take you right outside your back door or in your own bed. Wherever you want to go, your imagination will be what brings you to the end of the story. So those are the three I's in story writing. It doesn't matter always if you have good grammar. Sorry, Mrs. Damon. <laughs> that isn't always the most important thing. When you're first writing a story, the most important thing is to think up and use your imagination, and then everything else will come to you. All the writing, you can always fix that later. What you want to do is make up a picture in your mind, use your imagination to get the story, and then you worry about your handwriting and all that stuff afterward. So first, I'm going to share with you a story that I wrote about two years ago, and I'd like to share it with everybody out there. Mrs. Damon's class has heard this story, and they really liked it, so I'm going to read it again. Excuse me. Thank you, John. This story is called The Little Flower. Uh, John, would you, could you come over here, please? Thank you. I, ha I like to use my hands when I talk. Here, put the thing down. <laughs> so we're going to keep this here. Is that OK? Is that OK? OK, that's fine. Ready, John? OK. This is called The Little Flower. Thank you, John. <laughs> Ready? All right. A flower once grew, thank you, John, among the thorns and the weeds. Now, this is a poem. I'm sorry to interrupt myself. This is a poem. It's called the narrative poem. And there's different ways to write stories. It can either be in this form or in a regular story form, where it just, and I'll read one. Uh, this is two examples of different ways you can write. A flower once grew among the thorns and the weeds. It started out as a small, sprouting green seed. It popped up through the ground, so happy to be, given life and a chance to grow up and see. The sun and the birds, so bright and so free, existing together in sweet harmony. So as this flower grew, the thorns got mad, because this flower brought hope, and it made the thorns sad. Even when she was small, not yet ready to bloom, the thorns crowded round her and took all the room. But the rain and the sun helped her grow every day, and though the thorns hurt her, she still continued to say, I'm glad I was given my one chance to grow. So she pushed up even harder, but the weeds kept her low. She started to grow sideways looking for the right way, and those thorns tried to trick her, and they told her each day, oh, little flower, you're on the right track. Just keep going that way. No, don't look back. Funny, she thought, I don't see the sun. This can't be the way. Now look what they've done. And as she decided there was no way to fight, a little girl came and saw her who was all dressed in white. The little girl knelt down and closely peered in. Through the briars and the thorns, she spied the flower within. She said, oh, little flower, how sweet and alone. I'll call my mother and we'll take you home. The mother then came, that's okay, John, with the little girl at her side, and they began clearing the thorns till it was just enough wide to scoop up the flower, roots and all, and bring her home to their yard where she could grow big and tall. They came to the yard and little flower looked around. So many colors and shapes of flowered friends she had found. Each day with the sun, she woke up and grew, thinking now and again about the thorns that she knew. She could never forget, no, it would never be. Her alone with the flowers, for she would always see the only family she had were those pitiful thorns. I'll never forget, oh, why was I born? She felt so angry like never before, and she started to wilt. Her petals fell to the floor. Just then the girl, who was all dressed in white, came to check on her flower, and oh, what a sight. She sighed deeply and said, oh my, my poor flower is wilting and soon she will die. She reached down and spoke in her childlike way. Flower, your life began new when I planted you that day. <laughs> Lily smiled. <laughs> I picked you up from the thorns and I planted you here. Now the least you can do is show me you care. All I ask of you is a simple request to remember you're beautiful and bloom like the rest. That made little flower take notice and think. She looked at the girl, stood tall, and winked. That's the end. That's the end. Now that's an example of a 
rhyming story. They can, it can be that way. You can write a story that way. That's a poem. Or you can write a story in, in a regular way, like when you read in a storybook. What I brought here were some pictures from, and I have classrooms, other classrooms, that draw pictures of the stories that I, that I write. This is from Mrs. Benninghoff's. I hope the light can see that, Mike. No. Well, Mrs. Benninghoff's class has been very nice. That's the first grade class, and they, they always let me come in, and I read my stories, and they, but I guess we, the light won't be able to pick these up. But anyway, little flowers, crooked flowers, and things like that. Okay, so what did you think of the first character? What did you think of the little flower? I know that we've kind of, go ahead. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The first time that I heard it, I thought that the flower was going to wilt and die, uh -huh. but you surprised me through the end. Oh, did you like that ending? Yes. Was that a good ending? Yes. Better than the hammer just... Yes. Well, the way you died, <laughs> yes. you crumble up and be no, no. Okay. Go ahead, David. Um, when the thorns what would all crowd her around her, they, I guess they kind of felt a little jealous because she was going to grow up to be tall and beautiful and they would just be thorns. That's right. Oh, good thinking. That's the thought that I had. Exactly. Thank you, David. I thought when... What's your name? I'm sorry, Bobby. Okay. Let's all say our names when we're talking. Go ahead, Bobby. My name's Bobby and um, I think I thought, like David said, that um, when the thorns were going to call crowd up on her, that the thorns were, might go through her right. and um, kill her. And kill her so that she couldn't really make a life for herself. But she decided that, what did she decide, Ryan? That maybe that she would get saved one day yeah. and uh, someone would help her. And that's what happened because she, she uh, just thought that maybe it would really happen. Yeah, and, and she and she and she really tried to get out. Right. But they just pulled her back down some more. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I I think you should keep your mistakes and stuff because you might want to use the idea later in the story. Absolutely. When you're writing a story, now that's a good point, Robert. When you're writing a story, the first I'm sorry, that's a good thought, Robert. When you are writing a story, to keep your first draft because you might always want to go back and decide that you might want to use a little piece of it as you go along. Um, I thought that when the thorns were going around her, that the flower would probably die because they were taking out, they were taking all the sun, the rain. Right. But she, but she lived. And she's going to, hello, David. I love your tie. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I have one story that I'm now, yes, John? Are you, me? Would you like to hold it? Okay, just a minute. Um, what I'd like to do, this is a story that this class has not heard yet. This is the first. I've read it in Mrs. Jacobs' fifth grade class, and that's it. Um, no, excuse me, Mrs. Benninghoff's class. But this class has not heard it, and they're looking forward to it because they, they were with me from the beginning when I had the first idea, and it's called Too Much Ketchup. And it's about a little girl who, like the title says, likes too much ketchup. So, John? go. Do you want me to hold it? You can, but you got to hold it up high enough. So, okay. Here we go. Ready? All right. This is too much ketchup. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Maggie. She was eight years old and in the third grade. Maggie liked school, and she liked her teacher, Mrs. Bellevue. She especially liked math. It was her favorite subject. Class, who can tell me how much five times three equals, asked Mrs. Bellevue. Maggie's arm was up in a flash. She knew that answer, and that's why she just loved math. At home, Maggie had a black and white dog named Max. Every day after school, Maggie and Max played, ev played keep away. She tried to teach Max tricks, but he just didn't want to listen. He kept running all over the yard. He was just glad to have someone to play with. And Mom said, Max misses you so much when you are at school. He just wants to play. Maggie had a little brother named Brendan, who was three years old. He got into all her crayons and toys, and he never listened to anything she said. I guess he just missed me, too. That's why he doesn't listen to me when he runs all over the house and makes a mess everywhere. He must be lonely, thought Maggie. Hmm. All in all, Maggie was a happy eight-year-old. She even liked her little brother when he was sleeping. But there was one thing that she liked even better than that. What's that? Maggie loved ketchup. Not just on, a, on some of her food, oh no. Maggie wanted ketchup on all her food. <laughs> Maggie, said Mom, I've made some wonderful fried chicken. Hmm, sounds delicious, said Maggie. I'm starving. Let me get the ketchup. Ketchup again, said Mom. Come on, Maggie, try just one piece without ketchup. It tastes so good. No, Mom, 
I want ketchup. I love ketchup. I need ketchup, said Maggie. At home or at school, over her friend's house or at a restaurant, if it was meal time for Maggie, ketchup wasn't very far away. At Luigi's, their favorite Italian restaurant, it was the same. Giuseppe, the waiter who talked funny, knew Maggie and her family because they came in there quite often. May I take your water now, please? asked Giuseppe. Yes, Giuseppe, said Mom. I'll have linguine with white clam dots, please. I'll have eggplant parmesan, said Dad. Oh, and Brendan will have a cheeseburger, said Mom. Then Giuseppe turned to Maggie and said, <laughs> And then how you, signorina, tell me. Tell me you don't want the ketchup on this day, you would make me so happy. Hmm, I would like, Maggie thought for a moment while all the grown-ups listened and waited, a salad with ketchup, of course, a grilled cheese sandwich smothered in ketchup, and a side order of potato salad completely covered in ketchup, please. Mamma mia, said Giuseppe. Signorina, I will bring her you what that you ask her, but I don't think you are going to like it. You know, blame her Giuseppe, okay? Maggie nodded her head yes. Then she said, oh, Giuseppe, one more thing. I would like a hot fudge sundae for dessert, please. Oh, no. Maggie paused and said, but you can just bring out the whole bottle of ketchup for that. All the grown-ups shook their heads and said, Giuseppe walked away, shook his head, and said over and over, Mamma mia, Mamma mia. It was the same for Maggie at school, every day at lunchtime. Maggie, asked Allison, why do you use ketchup on everything? I just love ketchup on all my food, said Maggie. Even on chicken soup, asked Liz. Even on turkey sandwich, asked Jelly. Even on cereal, bacon, cinnamon, toast, and pork chops, asked Lisa. Yes, sorry. Yes, said Maggie, on everything. I love ketchup on all my food. So her friends all laughed at her. One day at school, there was a new girl in class. Mrs. Bellevue, Maggie's teacher, said, girls and boys, I'd like you all to meet Amanda Ranger. She'll be in our class from now on. Want me to hold it? You got it. The new girl's face was red, and Maggie smiled at her. At lunchtime, the new girl sat over in the back of the cafeteria by herself. She was eating a sandwich that she had brought from home. Maggie and her friends all whispered about the new girl. I wonder where she lives, asked Allison. I wonder where she is from, asked Liz. I wonder what game she plays, if she has a nice mother. I wonder what she brought for lunch, asked Maggie. It was decided that Maggie should go over and ask the new girl to join them. Why me, asked Maggie. Allison, you go. I'm eating my lunch. I just love tuna fish and ketchup sandwich. That is a terrible thing to eat, Maggie, Allison said. Nobody I know eats like you. I'm moving. I can't sit here anymore. Allison picked up her tray and moved over to the next table. And then, so didn't all the other girls at the table. Maggie looked up and saw from across the cafeteria the new girl was waving. Maggie waved a small wave back. Then the new girl picked up her tray and started to walk over to Maggie's table. All the other girls watched as she walked over. Hi, I'm Amanda. Can I sit here? She asked Maggie. Sure, said Maggie. No one else wants to. Maggie could see all the other girls whispering, but she didn't care. What are you eating? asked Maggie. My favorite, tuna fish with ketchup, of course. What do you have for lunch? Maggie showed her her sandwich, and they both started to laugh. Maggie and Amanda became friends right away. They played games together, walked to school together, talked on the phone together, but even better than all that, they both loved ketchup. One Saturday, Amanda came over to play at Maggie's house. At noontime, Maggie's mother called, Girls, come on in the kitchen and have some lunch. Hmm, said Maggie, I'm starving. Me too, said Amanda. Let's go and see what my mother made for lunch, said Maggie. <laughs> they walked into the kitchen and Maggie asked her mother, what's for lunch, Mom? Well, I've made grilled cheese sandwiches and we have potato chips and some pickles. How's that sound, girls? Asked Mom. The girls both nodded yes, and then Maggie looked at her mother and asked, but where's the ketchup, Mom? Oh, the ketchup, said Mom. Well, I forgot to buy some when I went shopping. Now you girls sit down and I'll get the milk. Maggie and, Man and Amanda were stunned and breathless. Their legs felt weak and rubbery. They looked at each other and then at their plain old cheesy grilled cheese, salty and dry potato chips and sour pickle. Gee whiz, what a meal, whispered Maggie to Amanda. There was nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Mom was standing there with her arms folded across her chest. That was a bad sign. Maggie and Amanda slowly sat down, staring at each other. They both took a bite at the same time, then another, 
Yes, it was boring and dry, but they were really hungry. And once they started to talk, they completely forgot about the ketchup. I'm almost done, said Amanda. Me too, said Maggie. They both finished their milk and took one last bite of their sandwiches. You know, Amanda, said Maggie, that wasn't so bad, I guess. No, not really, said Amanda. I'm glad you're my best friend. I never could have done that without you, said Maggie. Yes, with the best friend. Even eating lunch without ketchup was kind of fun, said Amanda. The end. <laughs> Oh. Hi, Willie. Hi. Hi, Willie. How are you doing? Good? That's good. The lights are kind of bright here, huh, guys? We didn't really think it was going to be so hot, but it really is. <laughs> no? Must be me. Okay. So what do you think about that? What did everybody think of Maggie? Yes. My name's Crystal, yes, and I thought at the end when they were saying that that was like their best, they liked each other because yeah. they couldn't have done that without that. Each other. And it reminds me of some of my friends. Well, that's good. It's, not, it's nice to have a best friend, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You can do all, all kinds of stuff together that you wouldn't be able to do with, with strangers. Right. Right? Right. <laughs> yes, David. Yes, David. I thought that um, it reminded me of the book Chocolate Fever oh, because he, um, he, he loved chocolate and everything. Oh. So one day he, he ends up with these big spots on him, and they en ended up being chocolate. Really? So he, he was turning into a human chocolate bar. So Imagine that. Maybe Maggie will <laughs> do a big ketchup bottle. <laughs> okay, Bobby. That you can never go through anything without your friend. Right. That's the, that's the moral of the story, I guess. It's the moral that you really need your best friends, and your friends are very important. Yes. Yes? Kristen, what do you think? Yes? yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good girl. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, my name's Ryan, and I think the well, same with Dave, but um, the only thing that happened is because uh, Henry. Yeah. Um, Henry? Yeah, that's, that's his name. Oh, okay. And uh, he ate too much chocolate, mm -hmm. and he had, like, freckles all over him, but they were made out of chocolate. Right. Yeah, that's what David was just talking about, that story. And they, they were, there was this guy, Mac, and they... There was robbers, and they're and they're trying to get the um, fur and stuff like that mm -hmm. in the car. But you thought that this story was a, a best friend is really important, right? Yes. Yes, Shane. Go ahead. Go ahead, honey. I I saw it in the book Chocolate Fever. Oh, oh. Chocolate Fever. So why don't we, anyway, we're going to move right along into the next segment of the show. And the next segment is because we're going to have these wonderful readers come up and talk about their stories. And we're going to do that right now. Who is first on my list? Let's see. I have Shane. Ooh. Everybody clap for Shane. Why don't you have a seat there? I'm going to get a little, John, let's see. Where is, yes, please, Mr. Sawyer, thank you. I feel like Oprah. <laughs> okay, let's see. Shane, you want to stand up and sit? Come on. Oh, let's do that this way. You're going to go on that side like we had. We practiced this. So this is, we're going to try and do our very best. Okay, Shane. Shane, what, how, what's your last name, Shane? Tell everyone your name. Say, my name is? My name is Shane Paquin. Okay, and look out there at the camera. Say, hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Okay. <laughs> okay, what is the, now the name of your story? Now, let's just say one thing. Miss, Mrs. Lisa Rizzo, who's over there, she helped out with the children doing their stories here. She's been a wonderful asset to the entire community. And we would like to thank her very much for helping the kids out with this, because without her, we wouldn't have these wonderful illustrated stories. And the teachers. OK, Shane? Yes. Good. Very good. Very good. OK, Shane, and the name of your story is? Thrilling Thur Thursday. Thrillin' Thursday. Okay, would you want to turn it and you read it? And I'll hold, th I'll hold this for you. We'll go this way. Okay. One night around 8 o'clock p.m., there was a strange noise. It sounded like birds in the night. So I got up out of my bed. What a sight I saw. It was elephants with wings flying everywhere. They were jumping from rooftop to rooftop, waking everybody up. Now, this is the first time for the rest of the class to hear the story, right? Okay, they've taken these stories over to the kindergarten over at um, Lincoln Lynch.
and that's the, that's the only audience that they've had is the kindergarten students. And to keep them steady, they were flapping their ears. Okay. I'd never seen such a thing, but I was. But I was. With all those elephant noises, I could hardly sleep, but I did. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. The next Thursday, mm -hmm. there were mice flying on pieces of cheese. But I was ready. <laughs> the end. That's so cute. That's wonderful. The end. Shane, you have wonderful colors throughout your story. What was your inspiration for these colors? Well, I can't Now, what is this? This is wallpaper? That, is that, this wallpaper? That's like stick-on plastic wallpaper. Mm -hmm. um, this ribbon. is like gold ribbon. Right. And this was like a dog collar thing. Oh, well, this is the, a very pretty page. This is a very pretty page. And let's uh, see, let's go back to... Okay, yeah, we're okay. That's very good, Shane. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Shane Paquin. Clap again. Thank you, Shane. All right, who's next on my list? Let's see. Kristen. Yes, please. Yeah. Oh, what's your name? I'm sorry. Crystal. Crystal has a question. What gave you the idea of the story? Yes, that's a good idea. Shane, what gave you the idea for the story? Well, I was flipping through some books, and I found this book. The title of it was um, Tuesday. And it, it was about frogs flying on lily pads mm -hmm. and pigs with wings. Imagine that. See, and you use your imagination, and look what you came up with, that beautiful story called Thrilling Thursday. Wonderful. Now, how many books have you written so far, Shane? Six. Six books? Books. Imagine that, boys and girls. Okay, Crystal, are you ready, Kristen? Kristen Walker, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Now, say, say your name and look into the camera. Okay. Say hi. My name is Kristen Walker. Say hi, Mom. Go <laughs> on, <Good> Mom. <laughs> <Hi, Mom. laughs> All righty, and we have your book. We have your book here, and it's called Little Bear, What Will You Wear? Little Bear, what will you wear? Here we go, off into an adventure. One day Little Bear woke up and could not decide what to wear. Then he finally decided on wearing jeans and a sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. The next day Little Bear had the same problem. Then he decided on wearing a t-shirt and shorts. The next day was a Saturday. His mom got up early to go shopping for some clothes for Little Bear. After that, Little Bear always knew what to wear. Very good. Yep, no, that's a, we can clap after the story. We can clap after the story, and then we'll just ask a couple of questions. Does anyone in the audience have any questions for Kristen? Oh, good. Let's go in the back here. Kel Kelly? How did you get the idea from the story? Okay. How did you get the idea for the story? Well, in our class, we had a friend Kim that moved, right. and she had the same title, so I decided I might as well use the same title. And the story's different, but I, I just thought it. But you used your imagination, and you came up with a different way to, even though it has the same title, yeah. even though, it, but it's a different story. Yes, fine. Say your name. Say your name. I'm Robert, and how did you come up with the name Little Bear? That's what, that's what, I think that was what she had just said. There was a girl in her class, go ahead. I know it's like the the name and the title, but how you why did um, why did you name them the same thing as on the title? Because she thought it was a she she liked that name so much that that was the name she wanted to have for her story too. You could do that sometimes. You could you're gonna hear something that out that people are talking about, and we all share a common ideas and stuff like that. But we have to make up our own stories, even though we might come up with the same name sometimes for different things. Right? Right. I have a question about the picture about little This picture here? Who is that supposed to be? This one right there. That is supposed to be a picture of Little Bear. And look at the wonderful fur she used for this. This is really pretty and soft. Very nice. Okay, Kristen. That was wonderful. Kristen Walker. Thank you. What <laughs> time? Okay. Um, and I have time. I have 
Next on my list, Jason Pratt, please. Okay. My name is Jason Pratt. And hello, my, mother. Hi, hi, mom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the name of your story is? Whales, whales everywhere. Okay. Whales are warm-blooded. Some whales kill each other. Some whales eat squid.